Good evening, everyone. T-Speaker 222 XRP Future Millionaire with a side bet on XLM and Future Digibyte OG. Before I go any farther, I'm not a financial advisor. Should you take my advice? No. But if you so choose to, because I do next level technical analysis, you know, make an educated decision and do it based on the charting and not based on what I'm saying. So if the charts lead you to make a decision, well, who am I to say not to do it? So something we have to consider, something TL said. With this pattern, this was a, a couple days ago TL said this to me because he comments regularly and he's uh, one, of the, one of the ones I trust more on the charts. He has a great grasp on it. He doesn't need to use, you know, somebody else's chart. He knows what he's looking at. So when he says something, I take it into consideration. And because we, it didn't, this my pattern wasn't, it's not irrelevant. But the fact it did bounce up here, we have to seriously consider a reversal on the way back down. So if we do go down, we might not get down to 58 cents or 75 cents. We might have to just base it on the reversal and we retrace. And then if we get down to 95 cents or something, we might have to pay serious consideration to a triple bottom right there. You know, we might not go farther than that, especially with this boost up. Now it makes it that much harder to get down there. And the top of that pattern could have, in fact, started, like TL said, around 95 cents with this recent push up. So that's something to seriously watch. So TL, I appreciate the continued input for real, bro. Something we got to watch though in the minute, you know, we did form this W. So oftentimes at the end of a pattern, when you have a hanging W like that, it's kind of like the white flag. Like we're done. We got nothing else. We don't have enough volume. We're going to push back to where we started. So we're, we'll see how this plays out. It's going to be interesting though, because in the daily, like some of you have sent me, which I'm proud of you guys for seeing this. It does look like it's forming a clear head and shoulders, and by the end of the day, you know, we'd be back down to 138. But now we have to seriously consider, do we want to wait until a dollar? Or do we want to start nibbling again when we get back to that dollar thirty-eight range, seeing the top end potential? Especially if we come back down on a reversal. And I know TL will be the first to be like, hey, you know, it looks like it's on a reversal. So if it comes down on a reversal pattern big enough, you know, we, we're going to have to seriously study it. And we're going to update it accordingly. You know, it's not that I'm not saying I'm, I'm not, you know, it's not that I'm afraid to say I'm wrong. I'm not afraid to say I'm wrong. I'm wrong a lot. Like I tell you guys, you know, it happens, but it's wrong on what basis, how low we're going to get. You know, we should have took, you know, we had an 89, we had a 95. I would expect, you know, this pattern to come back down to 138 area. It's just what it is. There's a lot of FOMO going into this. Expecting that the court case was going to get done today because people don't really know what's going on. And as you guys heard, Jeremy Hogan came out a few hours ago and said, we're not going to hear nothing until next week. So I'd expect nothing less for this to go down to the 135, 138 range. Let me go from there. Now that we've seen this little burst up, you know, we got to we gotta pay serious attention, you know, and see how it comes down. Because if it comes down and it inverts itself, well, we'd have to pay serious consideration to the level it stops at if it's on an inversion. So, you know, I said not to, I wasn't buying it at this level because it's clearly on a head and shoulders back down to 138. And I'm not going to get FOMO'd in. So it's going to be no harm, no foul, except you didn't run up 15%. And likely if you wrote up, you'd probably keep it anyhow. But that's why I said we're going to have to find a spot. We're just going to have to start building up our position again because it's no fun being on the sidelines. Like I said, I got $5,000 sitting on the sidelines with the, and nothing. So we're going to have to figure out a spot where we're looking and we're like, okay, if it goes down, at least we're not at the top. But, you know, we're going to have to start to acquire here because the farther we get into May the more uncomfortable I get. XRP to me is the chosen one. And I think I went a little bit away from my ways just a tiny bit because I had to come up with money, had to sell stuff because of some stuff. And uh, you guys know the story. So we need to get back into the acquiring phase because the more I think about this, it's like, even if I was buying it at $1.58, it's so fucking cheap compared to where it's going to be. This is pennies on the dollar. 
So even if we had to do $500 a week at this level and start building it up before it hits $2, I mean, we would look back at this and be like, holy fuck, we made such a great decision, but not right now. We got to let the head and shoulders plan out, and then we can go accordingly. If we're down 20 cents cheaper than this, you know, I want to hear in the comments, do you think we should just start stacking it back up or add to our position? Because in my philosophy, if it comes down from 158 and goes to 138, you should probably buy some. And then if it goes down from 138 to a dollar, you buy more. Then it goes down to 75 cents, you buy more, and then we won't fuck ourselves. Just use like 35% of your uh, XRP allowance when you're at $1.35 or $1.38. Because then we're saving money. We sold out at $1.53. We should have been doing this earlier, but you know, we were trying, we were trying to see what would happen, and there's nothing wrong with that. Some of us made a lot of money on the way down and up and down and up. I wasn't one of them on the way up the last time. So it would have been nice to have it from, you know, 95 cents. I told you guys, you guys who watched my show, that I was going to buy it at 95 cents. I fell asleep. And by the time I woke up, it was $1.30. So <laughs> I didn't get that chance. But the guys who listened to it, you guys did some serious fucking cashing out. Like, that's what I mean. Like, there's a lot of opportunities and there's a lot of different things. You guys, with XRP, every time it's under a dollar, we should be buying it. It's that simple. Now that we know this case is going to be, something's going to happen next week. We're going to have to get on the gas a little bit. We're going to have to add to our position, start a position. And then if it goes down, we build accordingly. If it goes up, we also build accordingly. Because I, <coughs> now that this case is over, on that first run up, I wasn't buying over a dollar. But now that we're this far into it, now we're farther in. You know, now we got to decide. The all-time high is still 100%, 160% from here. You know, if it goes down to $1.30, that would be a good spot to start buying back or adding to a position. So we're going to be doing it on the acquiring basis. So don't come at me if you buy it too, too expensive and it goes down, but be happy. Rejoice. If it goes under a dollar and you bought it at $1.40, fucking thank God you're getting it under a dollar because you know the potential. If it goes to 50 cents, fucking, you know, go to church and fucking throw some holy water on you and say, Jesus Christ, thank you. But that's how we're going to have to start doing this. I think we all got away from our ways a little bit, including myself. But that's what happens in a flash crash. We're trying to figure out how to keep portfolio alive. And we did a good job. We didn't lose money. We just didn't make, some of us didn't make this 15, 20% last night. And again, it always happens when I fall asleep. I fall asleep. What happens? An hour later, it goes up to 153 and that was my buy zone. So when you guys asked me if I was buying it this morning, no, because it was too late. That would have been the true FOMO. FOMO wasn't at 153. That was the buy and before FOMO hit. Because now people see it broke that 152 and they're like, holy shit, we're going somewhere. Not realizing 166 is what completely turns this pattern upside down. If it goes above 166, I'm going to tell you right now, this pattern's probably over. But every time it got, like I said earlier, it didn't get high enough. It got rejected. So in that sense, we're lucky that it looks like we're on this head and shoulders in the daily. Because at least it's no harm, no foul, and we'll be able to buy back at the same, you know, same price it was at when it came up today. But now we got to see what it's going to do at the dollar thirty-eight level. I wouldn't be throwing hundred percent of your portfolio in there. Like I said, I might throw thirty percent of it back down to a dollar thirty-eight just because I'm humbled a bit. Because in the grand scheme of things, a dollar thirty-eight ain't shit. You know, so I kind of kicked myself in the ass a little bit. But, you know, that's what happens. I'm trying to trade for everybody, trying to do this, and I lose sight of what I'm doing. So we're going to get back on the right page. I'm going to help us do it. Let's look at this as uh, kicking the nuts or kicking the ass if you don't got nuts. Uh, because we do have a precious, uh, we're holding on to something precious here, and it's time for us to start acting like it because we should never be without it. You know, so I'm going to leave you with that. T speaker 222 XRP future millionaire with the sideband and XLM and future Digibyte OG. I'll update you later, but let's let this head and shoulders finish out and then we're going to start building from there. Stay blessed, guys.